What does it mean to talk about the edge of mathematics? That's the precipice we're going to walk along today as mathematicians close in on a number so large that it brings us to the limit of what is knowable in modern mathematics. Get ready, guys. (laughs) So this story starts with the legendary figures of Alan Turing and Kurt Gödel, and it takes us to a number that makes the number of all particles in the universe look puny by comparison. Yeah, this is is starting to blow my mind already this story. <laughs> we're going to find out if we've broken mathematics. Yes. Uh, it is a lot to get your head around. Um, so we're going to be guided by the steady hand of Jacob Aaron. Jacob, um, this is about something called busy beaver numbers. Uh, and that's a deceptive title, isn't it? Because it makes it sound like it's something simple that mm. we're going to understand. And kind of cute and childish. Yeah. Um, so can you gently take us through it? Yeah, so there, there is a sort of a childish and, and playful element to it that I'll get to. But really, as you say, this story starts with Alan Turing in the 1930s, who showed that any computer algorithm can be mimicked by imagining a simple Turing machine that reads and writes the zeros and ones of information on an infinitely long tape following a series of instructions um, that are called states, and a more complex algorithm requires more states to execute. So for every number of possible states, say five states or 100 states, there are finitely many corresponding Turing machines. But the big question is how long it takes a Turing machine to execute its algorithm to work through the states. And this is um, something that mathematicians have wrestled with for, for some time. And this is where the busy beaver comes in. The busy beaver number is defined as the Turing machine uh, with the longest possible runtime for a particular number of states. Uh, so you can kind of think of it as a link between the, the complexity of the algorithm and how long it takes to run. What's interesting about the busy beaver number is it grows extraordinary quickly. So uh, busy beaver one or BB one uh, is just one. BB two is six. And then the fifth busy beaver number is 47,176,870. Oh, God. Now, if you want to know what the value for the next busy beaver number is, the sixth, uh, we don't actually know. People are still working to attempt to discover it. Uh, and actually, there's this whole online community that sort of enjoys this challenge. They call it the busy beaver challenge. Uh, and they were actually the ones to find the value for the fifth, fifth busy beaver number in uh, 2024 putting an end to a 40-year search, and they've now turned their, their eye to the next one. Um, and a, a member of this community, uh, known as MXDYS, uh, has discovered that it must be at least as big as a number that I'm really going to struggle to describe, but I will <laughs> attempt to. <laughs> so um, how can a number be so large that you can't explain it? Can't you just put N to the power of X or the other way round or use a, a Greek symbol or something? Yeah, like, um, uh, and how can it be that? I mean, I remember once scrolling through this a, a web page of pi yeah. to a billion places. And I, for some reason, I just scrolled through it, <laughs> can like S- hypnotize. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, can it be written down physically? You know, how do you t- help us out here, Jake? <laughs> Well, pi pi is, of course, infinite, so we can never fully write it down. But Mm. even these numbers that we're talking about go far beyond uh, a billion digits. A billion Mm. would be easy uh, to describe. So uh, the easiest way I find to think about this is to think about the number of atoms there are in the universe, which we estimate to be 10 to the power of 80. Uh, It's a very, very large number. (laughs) This is one followed by 80 zeros. That's Um, something we're supposed to be able to... Okay, that's the simple (laughs) thing. That's the simple. Thing. Okay. Yeah, just you know, just have the, the entire universe in your mind. <laughs> okay. ten, 10 to the eighty, and yeah. then we'll go for it from there. So, <laughs> okay. uh, ten to the eighty uh, is an operation called exponentiation. Uh, that's what happens when we're raising one power, uh, one number to the power of another. Um, but BB six requires us to go beyond exponentiation, uh, and we're now doing tetration, which is iterated exponentiation. So, while two to the power of three is 8, uh, 2 tetrated to 3 is 2 raised to the power of 2 to the power of 2, which is equal to 16, so that's not too difficult. <laughs> but 2 tetrated to 5 is a number with almost 20,000 digits. Wow. Uh, so far beyond the number of atoms in the universe. Okay, so we are, okay, we're getting, we're getting quite big. 
Yeah, that number's actually quite small yeah. uh, when compared to, to BB6, though. Um, so remarkably, uh, MXDYS uh, DYS has shown that BB6 is at least two tetrated to the two, tetrated to the two, to the nine. Uh, so this is this tower of iterated tetration. And I, that's that's the best I can do. I, I, can't, I can't compare it to anything that's even remotely familiar. It's absolutely ludicrous yeah i mean there's no there's uh, there's nowhere to go with this is that it's a it's a vastness that's incomprehensible i know this is the least of it but i didn't even know you could go beyond exponentiation no <laughs> so, no idea um, mathematicians will always find a way to to go beyond yeah ju just do it to itself <laughs> more times <laughs> um much of this work to find the uh, busy beaver bb numbers is is done in a sort of community amateur mathematical endeavor sort of way I, I, i've seen this term around busy beaverology I, I love that <laughs> yeah so i don't know there's just something about the the strange this this idea of you're sort of exploring the unknown and they have kind of sort of various uh ways of finding these turing machines that help you map out these numbers with sort of obscure bits of code and so yeah it, it's you know it's not the most fun thing in the world but for for these guys you know they, they really really enjoy it <laughs> okay but let's talk about how it's broken maths or we're on the edge of maths and what does it even mean to have this whole region of mathematics that you may not be able to interrogate yeah with. like isn't this just pointless like what, what does it really sort of i'm really sorry guys out there doing it. <laughs> but like, what does this tell us rather than just hey look we can generate massive numbers so to understand that we need to dive into the very foundations of mathematics uh, which is called zfc theory um and you can Think of this as kind of an agreed rule book of how to do maths, the logical assumptions that underpin uh, the modern way of, of doing mathematics. Um, but the dirty secret, and we've known this for almost a century, is that there is a fatal flaw uh, within these foundations. So uh, as you mentioned, Penny Kirk Girdle, he showed that the rules of ZFC cannot themselves be used to prove that ZFC is free of contradictions. And so what that means is that essentially there are some questions that are unknowable within this framework of mathematics you simply cannot say whether they are are true or not uh, so it, it, this is what kind of serves as the the edge of of mathematics and what's fascinating is that the the busy beaver numbers are sort of a measuring stick that show how close we are to reaching this strange edge for example, we don't know what the value of uh, BB643 is, uh, and that's going to be a number so huge that it makes BB6 look tiny. I, I, I literally have no idea how you would even begin to start expressing it. <laughs> despite that, and despite not knowing what the value of that, that uh, figure is, mathematicians have proved that BB643 would transcend um, ZFC. It would break the rules of mathematics as as we know them uh, now you could you could essentially fix this problem by saying okay well we'll add bb643 to the rules of mathematics but the question is when when does that threshold happen between bb6 and bb643 we we don't yet know oh. Um, next week, can we break another discipline? <laughs> <laughs> Biology? Oh, let's not. Oh, we need that one. <laughs> well, we do need massive. Uh, oh. <laughs> um.